don't turn off, this is going to be dirt cheap vapor blasting. I'm going to go through the basics of what you need. Where you take it to is up to you. I've taken it to a bigger cabinet, but I have used this system in one of those small 90 litre cabinets as well. The other thing is, I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you do a bit yourself anyway. You must have a compressor or you need to get one if you're going to vapor blast and you've got some sort of a cabinet like this or a smaller one. You can use it for both, but you do need to be aware it'll get wet and you'll need to clean it, but you can use whatever you want. I'm going to give you in the description a list of all the parts that you really need. Really isn't a big deal this and the results can be phenomenal. This is the heart of the system and basically without this you haven't got anything to work with and it's a dirty water pump and I bought this from a local supermarket. It was really not very expensive. The spec on this one is 400 watts, 10,000 litres per hour. I think that's 2,500 gallons per hour. There's probably a benefit in having one that's slightly higher capacity than this, but this definitely works for me. Um, it'll deal with quite fine gravel up to five mil. I think it's about a quarter of an inch, so it'll actually pump out some fairly big rocks. If you use gra uh, media that's too fine though, you can find it blocks whatever the impeller is and such like and makes it stall. So you do need to use a certain size, but the media we want to use is actually a, above what the minimum would be anyway. Important thing to know is it has a safety cutoff. When you're using it for draining a basement or a pond, this bit would float and as the water went down, it would fall down with it. When it gets below the level, it would turn off. Well, you don't want it doing that really and you don't want this too high so I've cable tied it on. Obviously I've got to make sure that the bucket doesn't drain out so yeah think about that. Uh, what else is this say? Make sure it's got enough adapters so you can get down to a size that you can use and other than that it's cheap as chips good to go and if it burns out you can always buy another one because they're not expensive. Where the water comes out of the pump, I've actually got a T-piece and you may say, well, why have a T-piece? Well, the idea is the pump, not only does it send water down one pipe for your blasting, it uses the other pipe to keep the slurry agitated in the tank. So it's important that you consider making some sort of device like this. All of the hose for the water side is 12.5 millimeter internal diameter it's braided hose, that's half inch diameter hose. The end of the hose that's being used to agitate, I've cable tied around the base so that it'll stay at the bottom of the tank and basically just keep water going round. I've also put a couple of holes in the pipe to try and just add to the agitation, but it seems to work a treat. And this is the business end where the actual blasting happens. The nozzle that you've got has air coming in at the top and the slurry or the water coming in at the bottom. So this is the 12.5 mil pipe. The air is actually on 3 8 inch, which I think is 10 mil. And I've put a cutoff valve so I can turn the air on and off. When you're running the system, the water and the slurry keeps coming through all the time and then you supercharge it with the air. Pretty simple to put together and I'm sure I could do a better job of that, but it works. Talking about the air side of the system, another important thing is you want to put a one-way valve in so that the air will go that way, but if water got into this pipe, it won't siphon back towards your uh, compressor. They're cheap enough to get. They're in the list that I've got in the description. And a connector for to your compressor, whichever, however you're going to connect that. I made this system really because I want to clean motorcycle parts like this. And they're not necessarily completely lunged in and it's made of aluminium and I don't want to destroy them and I want a reasonable finish on it. You can get lots of different finishes, I'll explain to you how later on in the video, but that's a, an after and that's a before. So if you have a look at that, you can see it cleans up really, really well so that you're ready to move on with the parts. They might not be like brand new, but they really are very good. I'm using this cabinet for my vapour blasting, but like I've said, I have used the smaller ones in the past. Issue that you have is where you're looking through does get covered with water, makes it hard to actually 
see what you're doing. That's true when you're doing sandblasting as well. The good thing with this, unless you're tempted to spray the inside of this, it doesn't cause it to get all scratched and fogged up. The other important thing to know about is the grit. And it's always the thing that seems least talked about when you see people doing these videos. I'm using for what I'm doing today, glass beads. And the measurement seems to be 180 to 300. It's actually quite fine, but it was, they said they're medium weight. Now that's about the finest you'd want to use. That's what you'd use for polishing and for cleaning off the corrosion of aluminium. If you want to be a bit more aggressive and the different types of grits you can use yeah, is up to you, but the recommendation seems to be aluminium oxide of a heavier grade. I think I've seen mention of 70 grit. I know I've used some stuff like that in the past and you can get rust off quite well. It takes longer than standard sandblasting though, because the water obviously cushions it. I think this is great for aluminium that's got corrosion, dirt and such like. You must degrease it before you use it, otherwise you're gonna waste a lot of grit. And it's a system you can use repeatedly. Now that's the chat. Now let's pull out my buckets of slurry, give it a stir up, get the pump fired up and see how it operates in action. You can probably see the slurry has settled to the bottom. This is a 25 litre container used for making home brew. I think they might call it a six gallon bucket. The good thing is it has a sealable lid and if you put a little bit of bleach into the water, you should be able to leave your slurry in it for a, for a time, you know, so you can keep reusing it. They're quite cheap to get. It means you could have two or three different types of media that you could use depending on what you were actually trying to do. Give it a, a stir. So I need to do that first to make sure I get into all the corners and get it in suspension. Once the pump starts, it will make this water very agitated and keep it going, but it won't necessarily pick everything off the bottom if it's still down there. So I'll give it a really good stir. Having set the water going, leave it for a while to stir up the slurry. Once I've stirred up the slurry, I need to then put the pump in and make sure the pipes are in the right place. And then importantly, you do need to put it underneath the right place in here or it's all gonna run out onto the floor. Now at the moment, I've only got it on a, just plug it in, plug it out. The water pump is gonna run most of the time anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But if I was getting posher, I might put a switch in there somewhere that I could turn it on and off. Uh, what else is to say? A waterproof light, and you do need a hose because you need to clean out the, uh, whatever debris gets onto this along the way. Trick is, get a hose with a fan spray, turn it right down. You don't need a lot of water and any water you put in here is gonna go into the actual tub at the bottom. It's not a big deal. It might overflow a little bit, but I wouldn't overly worry about that. Right, once I've got it going and it's running through, next thing is let's have a look at what I'm going to do this morning. The two things I'm gonna to do to show you is two parts of the rear hub. Now, I've already degreased them using uh, white spirit and give them a good scrub over. But if there are lumps of things, the chances are the blasting won't take that off. You may have to give that a scrape along the way. On this one, where it's obviously the brake side, there is rust staining around here. 
Now, this isn't going to make it perfect, but it will definitely take all the corrosion and marking off. And by the time I've finished, they'll have quite a good finish. Hopefully, you can see what these are like. It isn't that easy to catch it on camera. They've obviously been polished in the past. And yes, there are things far worse than this, but I'm looking for a clean finish. I'll probably have a scrape of anything that's lumpy on it, first of all. That was the first pass I've done on half of it and as you can see the bits of corrosion that were on it and the rust came off the tree. Now what I'll do is I'll do the other half and I will spend a bit more time on the areas that you can see to give as good a finish as I can for now. It's never going to be perfect. All I'm doing with this particular type of media is cleaning it more than anything else. I'd perhaps use thing, a slightly heavier grade of bead if I was purely after polishing, which I'm not. I'm after a clean at the moment. After a second pass, I am pretty thrilled with how clean that is. Obviously, I've not got a fully polished finish. However, that is really excellent compared to where I started off. I could certainly use that. I could decide now whether I'm going to polish, paint or powder coat. And if I wanted to put a honed finish on it, I'd look to use a slightly heavier grit. With any parts you leave in there while you're doing it, they do get snowed on. And it really will pay to seal up this cabinet better. You can see I've got bits of water coming through in a few places and my arms get a little bit wet. It's not too bad really, but today is reasonably chilly. So I'm also getting condensation on here. Not to worry, I'll crack on, get these things done. Big issue is the screen does get covered with some of the media, so you can't really see what you're doing easily. I don't feel tempted to put the blast gun against it because you'll just sandblast the inside of the glass on the perspex. You won't be able to see through at all. It seems to be an issue with wet blasting and with uh, dry blasting. I mean, I've got an extractor and everything, but it's always a struggle. And especially if you get a bit of glare from somewhere else on this side of the screen. I've found that if I use a bit of fresh water to squirt it off whenever I have a, a look and I'm letting the compressor have a, a cool down, seems to work out okay and if you've got specific parts you want to concentrate on just start on those bits when it's clear so you can really see what you're doing and just to give you an idea that's after about an hour so it's not made too much of a mess with the water i mean you'd certainly have as much grit from uh, sandblasting knocking about as well so it's not too bad even with my unsealed cabinet 
How expensive you make it is up to you and how good long term or if you want to use it inside. I need to do a lot more sealing on this cabinet. I've used a waterproof light. Yeah, that's good of me, isn't it? Didn't want to die. But at the moment, it still is a bit mucky. I intend to strip this cabinet down and seal all the edges so that it doesn't escape. So that was blasting using the glass beads. The compressor set at about 90 PSI. Um, as, and as you can see, here's some examples, it gave a really good result. So the important thing to take away is you can have a look in my uh, description and it will have all these things listed and some links to them on eBay in the UK, but I'm sure you can get them from other places as well. The important parts were the pump, the nozzle, the bucket, the check valve and the uh, grit. Two types of grit that I'll use. One is these fine beads, which I'll use mostly because I'm cleaning up engine parts. I also do have another blaster in which I've got some you know, iron silicate or whatever it is that's really aggressive when you need it to be. But in here, I would also use aluminium oxide of a reasonable size, again for perhaps being a bit more aggressive. You have to practice to find out what you want. And what I didn't want to do was go so harsh with a, a grit that I was spoiling things for other things. The results I'm getting are absolutely great. If you don't build one of these and find yourself a cabinet to use, then really you're going to spend a lot of money on having blasting elsewhere. Why not subscribe? Why not follow along? See what I'm actually making with the things I clean in here.